Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I'm going to do your February the 1st, just for today, in a meditation. You can reach me at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. Thank you for joining this morning. Let's go ahead and get into the meditation. I will be hosting the international meeting that I post down below at 5 a.m., Eastern Standard Time, if you want to join me for one hour, that would be amazing. Okay, February 1st, we felt different. Only after surrender are we able to overcome the alienation of addiction. And the title of that is Hardships. And it's taken from the basic text, page 22. But you don't understand, we spluttered, trying to cover up. I'm different. I really got it rough. We use these lines over and over in our act of addiction, either trying to escape the consequences of our actions or avoid following the rules that apply to everyone else. We may have tried them at our first meeting. Perhaps we've even caught ourselves whining them recently. So many of us feel different or unique. As addicts, we can use almost anything to alienate ourselves. But there's no excuse for missing out on recovery. Nothing that can make us ineligible for the program. Not a life-threatening illness. Not poverty. Not anything. There are thousands of addicts who have found recovery despite the real hardships they've faced. Through working the program, their spiritual awareness has grown in spite of or perhaps in response to those hardships. Our individual circumstances and differences are irrelevant when it comes to recovery. By letting go of our uniqueness and surrendering to this simple way of life, we're bound to find that we feel a part of something. And a feeling, excuse me, and feeling a part of something gives us the strength to walk through life, hardships and all. Just for today, I will let go of my uniqueness and embrace the principles of recovery I have in common with so many others. My hardships do not exclude me from recovery. Rather, they draw me into it. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please and thank you. Hardships, hardships make you harder. However, by the time you find Narcotics Anonymous, they've made you so hard and so antisocial that you begin to wonder how in the world can you recover? I heard one addict say, I'm damaged goods. I mean, and they were suicidal. So it wasn't like I could just, oh, you know, get over yourself, right? <laughs> it wasn't like I could just walk away and say, oh, just get over yourself. Everyone has, you know, difficulties. Everyone has been damaged. I couldn't pull that we're all in this together card right I could not do that because they were really at the edge the brink of taking their lives because of their hardships and they realized that they're using the hardships they pass through as a direct result of the using or the using they chose to do as a result of the hardships that it had changed them to a point where they were not relating well to society or anyone, even the people they claim to love. And they wanted to leave this life. So 
So this is serious and it can lead to further alienation if we don't get into the program and start doing the work in looking for the similarities instead of the differences. And it's very difficult to do. Most people, when they come to the program, we have a chip on our shoulders. We don't want to be there. We can't even really fully admit that we're addicts. So saying something like, oh, I'm a recovering addict sounds really slick and good, or I'm a grateful recovering addict. All that sounds really good. And it, it can change the brain waves as far as how we're looking at it. But the bottom line is, is that you wouldn't be a recovering addict if you had never been an addict. That's the bottom line. And sometimes we don't want to accept that. And that is troublesome because when we don't have any acceptance of this disease of addiction and we criminalize the disease of addiction, even in our minds, because other people have done it, the last to be, the last to be lost is the stigma of once an addict, always an addict. So even we have done that to other addicts. And that in and of itself is problematic because it causes a person to refrain from getting to the exact nature of their behavior and dealing with it. But Narcotics Anonymous gives us a way out. It gives a, us a solution. And if I had to relay my initial experience it took me a long time to get through the steps. It took me a long time to find the right sponsor. Um, and I really, really, really struggled with the word addict. I really struggled with it because I had an ideal of what an addict was. And I really felt that I was one of those functional people. Right? I never lost a job. Um, can't, I didn't think I was homeless. You know, I think after I got clean, I actually ended up without my home due to a divorce. But, you know, I didn't really associate the stereotypical um, ideal of an addict with myself. And it was very hard to get some acceptance and when my relatives would say you're an addict I would become so infuriated so for me I just had to accept that no matter what the word the behavior that that came with it was the unmanageability the obsession and compulsion and you qualify and you don't have to go around trying to convince people that you do and you don't have to go around convincing yourself that you don't, right? I qualify to be here just like you do. Hardships and all. And today I want for you to walk away from this podcast saying, you know what? I'm going to stop looking for the differences. I'm going to start looking for the similarities. I'm going to stop using my hardships to say I'm different from everyone else. Because when it comes to the disease of addiction, maybe how you got here may have been different, but the results were the same. You used to live and lived to use and you hurt everyone in your path as a result of your using. <laughs> I mean, really, the baseline of that, we are all the same. And so I want for you to be thinking about that today. And I want you to let go of your uniqueness in that sense and embrace the principles of recovery um, that you have found here, that you have in common with other people, other addicts, and that your hardships don't exclude you from recovery, but they have drawn you here. And so now that you're here, Let's roll up our sleeves and do some work. Speaking of doing some work, guess what, you guys? I decide to start the coverage of the steps. I've been talking about it, but I actually posted the first video on step one. 
and I went through the first eight bullets. And if I can find some time in my morning, I'm going to start the second section of step one under denial. And I invite you to listen to that. If you're looking forward to going through your steps, this could be your entry, you know, your help to get started to get your sponsor and stuff. And I just hope it blesses everyone. You know, I'm going to have a beautiful day. I got to get going here. I hope that you have a beautiful day on purpose. I know you can do it. It's February 1st. We're in the second month of 2023. So don't waste any more time. Go ahead and do the thing that you want to do, that you need to do, and make the best of this day. Talk to you soon.